United Against Cancer. next question which was about technology and how organizations like yourselves can use the power of technology we all agree uh, that technology is really vital in moving forward cancer mm. control and using that data uh, but uh, unfortunately not all uh, countries and organizations have access to clean qualitative data so that yes. that is an area i suppose do you do any work in terms of uh, exchange of technology or of skills with um, uh, low-income countries uh, where there are childhood cancer organizations or not just you know yeah so we do so part of what we uh, what we provide so we have um, a, a team that work on data within world child cancer and we do employ people who um, you know, within the hospitals, you know, we always support and employ people within the hospitals who help to improve the quality of data collection and sharing. Um, but ultimately, you know, our role is not, we're not a hospital, you know, we partner with the hospitals and we're, you know, we're never going to even want to, to dictate what they should do. It's up to the hospitals, the, you know, the leadership at the hospitals, the ministries of health, et cetera, to decide what's right for them. And obviously that has to be done largely I would actually suggest it at, at a national uh, level um, so we don't you know so we can't dictate what uh, what people do but we do always try to share the importance of data and the importance of um, mm -hmm. using data to measure how impactful you know are we really mm -hmm. doing what we are setting out to do are we spending our donors money effectively are we delivering mm -hmm. those lives that we're that we're really here to to save and I think that's that's something that uh, we're just in the middle of writing a new strategy at the moment uh, and improving our use of data and working with our partners and the governments to improve their use of data is going to be an underlying theme that, that sits within, within all, all the way through. The other thing I just want to say on um, on technology as well is I and there are already lots of high quality, high tech treatments for cancer available in the world. Mm -hmm. The challenge actually is not so much the technology for childhood cancer treatments. It's the availability of those treatments. So actually, the technology exists, and part of what we're trying to do and, and is is actually to make sure that the technology we already have in terms of these treatments, these life-saving treatments, is getting to the countries uh, that, that we're working with. And I think that you know, there's obviously as as things evolve and those thresholds about what we can do in cancer evolve, it will be again continuing to be our job to make sure that those new advances get into country. But right now. Then you know the countries we're working in. That often the treatments they're getting, we regularly you know talk to our country teams about them getting low quality versions of mm. life saving treatments. Mm. And when you have a cancer treatment that doesn't have enough of the active ingredient in it, mm. it's effectively a death sentence for a child, as far as I'm concerned. You know, mm. it is. It feels morally, professionally wrong that any treatment like that should be provided to any country for any child because it's a life-saving treatment and we have an obligation to ensure that those treatments are the highest possible quality. Yeah, you say that with a lot of passion and then, but you know, sometimes when you, it's, it's morally wrong, I agree. Uh, when you look at some access programs, uh, for instance, the WHO has a World Childhood Cancer Initiative that is working in partnership with St. Jude's to provide yes. these life-saving uh, medications. And there will always be the argument of, is it the numbers or the quality? Are we going to provide the you know, generic drugs or the, the others? So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a debate and one that uh, relates to the economy of not just the countries but the world and not that yeah. cancer. Uh, and I think I think there's there's a there's a good conversation to be had there. And I think that so the program of St Jude's, the global yeah. platform, um, mm -hmm. is is a real. I think it could be a really powerful vehicle for improving the quality of treatments. In and we're fully fully supportive of that. We're very much looking to looking mm -hmm. forward to, to partnering uh, on that as well. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think the question about whether it's generics or branded um, mm. treatments, I'm less, I mean, from my perspective, I've been working, at, say, I've been working in international health for many years. I'm less concerned about whether they're generics or branded. I'm much, much more concerned with whether, if it is generics, whether they are approved high quality treatments, which have gone through rigorous testing right. and, and, you know, and, have, and, have, and do what they say they're going to do. And that's that's much more for me. That's much more important than the brand. I think there's different. There's obviously there's nuances there which we could spend the rest of this whole podcast discussing. Yes, um, but it's but I think that I think one of the things that the global platform will really help to do is to ensure that whatever those treatments are, they're high quality and they're affordable and they're available. And I think that's the that's the starting that's point for anything yeah. that we that we can do mm -hmm. going forwards. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So I'm going to end with one question that is sort of two-pronged before I give you the chance at the final words. Um, in your pillars, you spoke about awareness. And yes, that is the usual range of the cancer spectrum. We start from awareness down to treatment. Not everyone goes into palliative care, but I want us to talk about it in the context of children and the work you do. So when you do awareness in the setting that you're operating in the UK, how do you find the reception to uh, of parents, for instance, not the ones that already have uh, the children with cancer, but you know, educating the general communities about um, knowing uh, about early detection of childhood cancers, uh, and then also the healthcare workers. For us, it's the issue, the big issue, which I want you to also talk about is the um, ability to diagnose it early. Mm. Uh, a lot of healthcare workers in my setting are not um, immediately tuned on to uh, childhood cancer. We go through the infectious diseases that are in our environment first, like malaria, but of course you have overcome the infectious diseases to a larger extent, but for it, in Africa, it's still a huge burden. And then if we go to, right to the end of the spectrum, what we don't like to talk about, we've spoken about how the outcome for childhood cancer is really quite good, uh, but there are those that unfortunately have to go through end of life care. Yeah. How is that dealing with parents from the perspective of running a non-profit organization and what kind of support do you offer? Yeah, so two super important questions and things I've actually been speaking about quite a lot recently. Um, so I think that one of the biggest impacts we could have, you know, the you and I together um, and on all of the different organizations that we can we can partner with is to improve early diagnosis. Um, there's around 50% of children never make it to diagnosis uh, or make it too late. You know, they're arriving at stage three, stage four, you know, quite often um, because of the challenges and the of, of diagnosing early or getting to diagnosis. Um, and I think that that is, like I said, it's one of the sort of four pillars that we're working on. And we're really trying to kind of think about what can we do differently? You know, what, how can we do more in this area? Because it's complex, you know, um, uh, a friend of mine who is a uh, a doctor here in the UK t was uh, was talking about something similar. He was saying that when you're trained as a doctor, um, you're trained that when you hear who's, expect horses, don't expect zebras. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you expect the familiar, so you look for the familiar, and that means that you lose time. You know, mm -hmm. And time, as we know, is crucial in the diagnosis of cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, I think to a certain extent, we need to train people to expect zebras. Um, mm. And, but we also need to, to the, and this is one of the big challenges in, in public health, is to, is to get people to their doctor in that first place. It's that, it's that health-seeking behaviour that we really need to see is that, you know, it's, it's, and it's really hard when you have family, you know, we've all got family pressures. It's hard to make the time or to see those things happening because they happen over time. But it's just to, to look for it, to be aware, like you said, right at the very start of this conversation, People don't even realise that childhood cancer is a thing. You know, it is it is rare, so people don't expect. So we need to make people aware that it's a thing, and then we need to work with you know community leaders. You need to work with hospitals, you know faith leaders, all the different people who influence people's choices and their lives, and make sure that message is getting out there. So we're getting more children to hospital early enough to be treated, um, because I think we can get the treatments there. 
but we need to get the children there. And that's the, that will make the biggest difference because for us as an organization, that palliative and end of life care is vital. And I think that, you know, if we're not getting children there early enough, we spend a lot more of our money on palliative and end of life care than, than I would really like to. I'd like to spend a lot less on that and a lot more on, on treatment. Um, but palliative care, but even, even in the best case scenario, you know, even if we get to 85, you know, 80 to 90 percent survival rates uh, in the countries we're working with, and we're a long way from that yet. Um, you know, palliative care and end of life care is always going to be a part of, of cancer care. There's just, you know, you can't save everybody. And, um, and I think that one of the things that we need to do better, people don't like to talk about it. People will talk all day about the glories and the majesty of, of children being born. You know, it is a magical, magical thing, but we never like to talk about end of life care. You know, we don't like to talk because it, it's horrible. I mean, who wants to talk about whether it's your parents or whether it's, you know, especially if it's, if it's children, yeah. you know, so, so we have, but, but it's part of life and it's certainly part of life lived with cancer, you know, so we have to be able to find a way to talk about it in the same ways, you know, the parents are talking to their children about it. We need to find a better ways and be more confident about talking about it openly and and you know, obviously kindly and thoughtfully, but to find a way to, because providing good quality end of life care is just as great a success for those children who can't be saved, giving them dignity, time with families before they pass. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just as great a success as actually for those children we can save that we do get there in time. Mm -hmm. And I think, we need to recognize that and we need to make sure that the public support that and, and realize that that's that's really valuable part of what we do thank you so much luke my your final words i want you as the ceo of an organization that is involved in childhood cancer control to talk to me as the ceo of an organization in cancer control in nigeria uh, Tell me what would you be your final words of advice. Final words? Oh, I'm not sure I've or got words. any. words. Okay, not advice. <laughs> I'm final not sure I've got any shots. words of advice for you, Doctor. But, final uh, thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> my final thoughts. Are, yeah, so the thing I would, I would actually love to say is that I think that this conversation and the relationship with you and with other people and organisations like you who are part of this world and want to do, you know, want to be part of the network which is solving this, for me, is the most important thing we can do. We cannot, we cannot and should not be, as World Child Cancer, be the leader in the work we do. What we can be is a really supportive and powerful partner to support people like you who are actually the gold dust in this whole movement in, in childhood cancer. And I think that, you know, starting these relationships, understanding where we can add to what you're doing or where we can support what you're doing is absolutely vital for me. And, and I think that, you know, the, we, yeah, like I say, we want to be that partner uh, to as many people as we, as we can, because I think that there is the needs there until the need is not there. We will, be there as a partner for you but um yeah so like i say it's uh, no no words of advice just words of, of hope and, and collaboration thank you absolutely a very good place to end it's always good to have um, partnerships across the world and have that open hand so one of the things that we're hoping to achieve by conducting this uh, interview series with Uncle Davy of various professionals that are involved in uh, cancer care thank you for your time last ask is for you to say with as much passion as you can muster because that's how the that's how the interview starts united against cancer united against cancer perfect you don't have to do it again <laughs> 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 sometimes i need to say do it three times but that was perfect thank you so oh, much fantastic well what, what a lovely i say what a lovely name what a lovely yeah, what a lovely thing to be part of. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, thank you. So I'll see you later soon. See you this All afternoon. Right. Thank you. Right. Bye -bye. Take care. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.